You didn't think we'd finish the Let's Play without going back and visiting the Dobby, would you? <laughs> I actually miss these things. Hey, hello to you too. Or, or the, the Dabu, not the Dabu. Oh, Dabu, yeah, that's yeah. right. I think he likes us. <laughs> you just gonna keep doing that, pal? So can we, uh... Recruit? Okay, there you go. Anyway. <laughs> you should be able to recruit one to your ship. Anyway, we're here in Maramba. Um, you need to go to that house on the left there. Uh, this one. Yeah, I believe so. So I did a lot of this quest off camera because it's really long and really annoying. But we made a skewer. Um, eh? Yeah, if you go into your items, actually. Uh, whatever you do, do not use the item. Okay, so the whole thing... Mom skewer. Yeah. So the way the mission goes, there's this lady in Maramba who mentions that her daughter ran off with some sailor. Right. And, and in Esperanza, the barkeep mentions that she came here with a sailor who left her. Right. Um, so once you talk to both of them, the barkeep will be like, oh, hey, you know my mom. Well, can you go apologize for me? And you do, but the mom doesn't want to hear it. All right. And the daughter <laughs> says, okay, well, I made this skewer um, because my mom works in a skewer shop. Maybe if you make this, she'll like, and give this to her, she'll know that I still care about her. Aww. And you do, and the mom's like, nah, this is terrible. Um, I don't want to talk to it because her heart is still just so broken. All so right. you talk to the girl again, and she says, okay, no, I'm going to make the, like, legendary skewer that my mom always tried to make that taught me. So you need to find these three ingredients. One of them Gordo has. Okay. Um, which is even harder once you get to this part of the game because Gordo is no longer at his bistro. He's, like, in one of the ships surrounding Soltis. Oh, wow. And you need the kale that comes from this one... Um, discovery. When you find the discovery, you get the kale from Spice Island. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the other one is from a random store in um, Nazrad. And it's not in the actual store. You need to like talk about things with him and he offers it to you. Huh. you take these three things, take it to the bartender. She makes this skewer and now we give it to her mom. All right. <clears throat> You're back. I said you were persistent, but this is ridiculous. What, you wish for me to taste another Cabal Skewer? All right, all right. I give in. Let me taste it. I can't believe it. This tastes exactly like my Cabal Skewer. Your daughter says she's never, she's never once forgotten about the times she spent with you. And she hasn't forgotten anything that you've ever taught her. And the proof is in the, that Cabal Skewer. She tried so hard to make it just like yours. Please, she's begging you for, 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 she's begging for your forgiveness. Tell her it'll leave, tell her that it'll taste even better if she leaves it on the fire for another 30 seconds. Huh? What do you mean by that? Are you forgiving her? Yes, you've won me over. I didn't think I could ever forgive her, but perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps I was at fault as well. All right, and now we have to go back to Esperanza. All right, got you. So I decided to skip a lot of the text for you guys and just go to the crux of it, because it really is an annoying back and forth. <laughs> it's one of those chain fetch quests that annoys a lot of people a lot of the time. And it's so well hidden, because a lot of the quests in this game you can kind of tell that they're like important yeah but this one you need to like keep talking to seemingly unimportant npcs like multiple times i see so welcome back to skies of arcadia i'm comic i'm scorpion and um we are going to turn in our last few quests and hopefully fingers crossed you mean you're not sure special stage um well i'm sure that we haven't missed anything but yeah, it's that one there. Okay. Getting well, it to I... proc can be kind of a pain right now. So I... I have been grinding ship battles out of... Um, like, non-story critical ship battles. Right. So that might be what we need. We have more than 90% of the treasure chests. We need to go hand in the last bounty at a uh, sailor's guild. 
We've gotten all the discoveries. We've defeated Pia Stoll and saw the end of her story. Right. Where is Esperanza so, again? Um, check the map. We're on top of it. Uh, turn right. I think it's on the other side of this cliff here. Might be. Because it's, it's on the side of the, um, the, the dark rift. Because that's, that's right. what they're, like, that's always right. looking at. And that's probably why the sailor <laughs> left that girl, because he was planning, they were planning on, like, making a new life over in Yakutoma. And then they got here and discovered that they couldn't actually make it. Poor girl. Yeah. Sucks, but I, I, I like how their story kind of, like, comes out of this <clears throat> world building. Yeah. Like, a lot of these... Every town in this game has a lot of character, I feel mm -hmm. like. Uh, like, there's there's a lot of story involved in a lot of these, but a lot of it is not necessarily explained to you. You kind of have to put two and two together, which I like I like storytelling like that. Yeah, there's just, like, a lot of culture. Um, so what we're going to do here is go around that wall. And it's... If you look at the mini-map, it's the big yellow building on the left, that one there. Oh, I see. Here we go. <laughs> so I, This is where we met Don. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm ordering you around a lot. I've been thinking a lot about what we need to do. Nah, it's cool, it's cool. Uh, so yeah, the barkeep. Who, I really like her design, by the way. Did you bring the cabal skewer to my mother in Maramba, like I asked? What did she say? She said it was almost perfect. Well, actually, she said you could probably cook it for about a minute longer, but the taste was perfect. Really? I'm so happy. I'm sure my mother has forgiven me now. I can't thank you people enough. Please, take this. It's a token of my gratitude. One Abrick Cham. Mm. Um, oh, if you're ever in the area, please don't hesitate to come and visit me. So if you check the items, I also got another Abrick Cham off camera, which is, um, the one that you need to trade in the Sky Sardis for with the random ship floating around. Right. So, if we use these two Abrick Chams... Final, Final Cupel! Okay! We did it, fam! Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> Alright, so, equipment, Final Cupel. Cupel's final and ultimate form. It looks very impressive and packs quite a punch. Um, well... Three... Okay, I'm gonna compare here. Final Cupel is 300 attack compared to... Oh, oh my god. Compared to the it's Vorlick Blade. It's stronger than the Vorlick Blade. It's stronger than the Vorlick Blade. Oh my god. It is a very, very good weapon. Compared to... Okay, Fina's attack right now is currently 455. She, she's stronger than Gilder. Well, yeah, but Gilder doesn't have his best equipment right now, actually. I just pulled him from the ship, so we should oh, okay. probably take a look. Okay, then in that case, let's go ahead and do that right Yeah, I just realized he has the Naster... The Naster's... The Naster pistol, which we want the Gilder special. Yes. A gun made specifically to fit, fit Gilder's touch. It has unequaled accuracy and power. There you go. 409 compared to... She's still stronger than Gilder. Dang, man. <laughs> Everyone is stronger than Ica, but well, that's because Ica's more of a support. Check Ica's boomerangs, too, because I don't think that's her best boomerang. Oh, yeah, no, it's not. The Grendel wing is uh, not, because... I think we need the moon wing. Uh... I believe you are correct. Yeah, the Moonwing. A superb weapon created... Ah, okay. Yeah, we never changed the car We never changed their weapons to, uh... To oh, wait. Recons. No, there should be a better one than that, too, that we got from, uh... From the Hamachow. The Hydra wing. The Hydra Wing. A boomerang modified by the Valuant Army with reinforcement for close quarters combat. And, uh, regurgitated by a Hamachow. So, wow. Her attack is 300 and, uh... Is 369, 450, 409, 518. Yeah. Now, to be fair, Gilder's quite a few levels down. That's true. I will grant her that. Um, Do you want to check the rest of Gilder's equipment? Because it's been yes, a while. Yes, you are correct. Um, here I, we go. I just kind of threw some armor on him while I was Yeah, okay. Playing. The Valiant, arm, the Valiant Uniform, what we want on him is something... Um, let's see. Fire mail... Gaia cape, silver armor, insulated mail, yada yada yada. From the look of it, I think our best bet is the Gaia cape. Okay. How does that compare to fiber mail? Uh, the fiber mail uh, is uh, weaker. Oh, yeah, it is better. Overall weaker. Okay. Yeah, the, um, it fits his personality, too. Enters new lands and search for adventure. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with the guy at Cape. Such a swash. He's got the Ancient Bracer, which increases attack power, defense, hit, and dodge. I'm fine with him having that. Okay. Um... Yeah, I think that's everything. Okay. Okay, um, so we got the Aberrant Champs, we got Final Cupel, now what? We need to go to a Sailor's Guild, and unfortunately there is not one in this town. We should probably go to, like, Sailor's Island or something. Very well. We're on it. Well, then on, on our way there, um, you want to talk about stuff? I just got back from Otacon. Yeah, how was it? It was pretty good. Um, I'll take a picture. Um, Oscar found, got me a souvenir. It is... Uh, very cool, uh, uh, Vice, Ica, and Fina, Standy, that I got at Artist Alley? Uh, yeah, it, it was a vendor at the Artist Alley. I don't remember the name of the artist, however. I do have her business card in my house, so I'll have to look at that later. And I, I love it, because this is one of my favorite all-time games, and... S same here, and in, this in case game, that wasn't already clear to those who This game does me. not have merch. It is really hard to find Skies yeah, of Arcadia Yeah, no, it's really merch. hard, it's really hard to find Skies of Arcadia art, and I, and I saw this, because I already had my eyes on something else. Those of you who follow me on Twitter, you saw it. I have this, like, cool Majora's Mask clock that's pretty much the same kind of standee type of thing. And um, I saw that they also had a Skies of Arcadia standee, and I'm like, oh my god, no one does Skies of Arcadia stuff. Uh, where's Pirate Isle? Uh, it's right up there. Up there, or Sailor's Island. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah, no, no one does Skies of Arcadia merch or, like, art all that much. Like, I see, I see plenty of it online, but... You don't go to a convention expecting Skies of Arcadia merchandise. Yeah. I saw it, and I was like, I have to, I have to get this. And like the 88 discoveries in this game, it is all the more valuable because you know how rare it is. Exactly. This but... is a flying flail of Otakon <laughs> swag. Yeah. Along along with everything else, like along with all that, I also got a really cool, like, Majora's Mask poster, which, like, has Link rising up with Majora's Mask behind it, but it's like a stained glass window type of thing. Oh, it's neat. really sick looking. Um, I also got a couple of other things. I met Carrie Walgren, um, who, for those of you who might not be aware, is the voice of Saber from Fate Stay Night, uh, Charmcaster from Ben 10, and K Kitana Khan in the new Mortal Kombat game. Oh, okay. I'm familiar with the third one. I thought so. I'm vaguely familiar with uh, um, Charmcaster. There, there are other characters she... Uh, yeah, yeah, there are other characters she uh, voiced. Like, she's actually really famous. She's worked with, like... David Hayter, she's worked with uh, Steve Bloom. Oh, very uh, cool. She's worked with, uh, 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 she's worked with, um, Frick. Uh, she's worked with Troy Baker. Like, uh, she, she knows her stuff, and she, a lot of her, a lot of her realm is in cartoons and video games. Cool. Like, kind of an even split between the two. You, you defeated everyone on the wanted list? Thanks to you, people can sail their skies freely and safely, except for, you know, Soltis. But, um, it is, it isn't much, but here, take this. 30,000 gold for beating Lord, for defeating Lord Zivlin Bane. So, I think, just check the buy and sell discovery information. I hate when my game makes I that know. Um, yeah, there's no info to buy. Um, we sold all of our discoveries, we turned them in, and everything's turned in on the wanted list. Right. So, um... Yeah. Okay. So just in case it like needs to be reset or something, go to the inn in town and we'll sleep for the night. Okay. Um, and I think if we got everything that we need, the three treasures should be out there for us to get now. Okay. You are worried, aren't you? I, I am, because there's a lot of little things. Uh, to the left? Uh, it's this building here. This one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, really, guy. Oh, wow. He's still there. Never stop rolling. Uh-huh. Um, rolling, rolling, rolling. I, I still love the fact that he flicks his mustache. Yeah, this has to be my favorite innkeeper. I don't know if we mentioned this when um, when we were talking about this game for your top 50. Mm-hmm. But, like, every NPC in this game is unique. That's awesome. No, we did mention something about that. Um, well, we more mentioned the fact that Despite the simplistic models, they put so much charm and personality into them. Yeah, and a lot of them are really expressive. All right, so... Okay, I was hoping the rare item merchant would have spawned there, but he's random anyway, so that's not necessarily a deal-breaker. Um, we're gonna head out, and we're gonna should sail... I check, uh, should I check the, uh, the guild again? No. Okay. Um, head out and sail south. All right. Oh, boy. I, I'm so nervous. Dude, like, you're, you're getting like, me worried. I feel like so much has led up to this. And if it doesn't work, then I don't know. We need to 
grind something. Okay, you see that arch? Yeah. Um, fly through it. And when we get to the other side, we'll, we're going to turn around so that we're facing the arch. And yeah. increase elevation. Okay. Check it. Um, explore this little area here. And if the... Oh, no. If, if the compass spins, that's supposed to be one of the three treasures. Ah, oh, balls. Um, well, we got a battle, but that's We not... may need to still do something. Do you want to go to Hamachao Island, see if, like, see what's required? Yeah, might as well. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. We... Bring up the guy. I think maybe... Okay! Oh! He eats him! Yep, that's Final Keeple. Okay! It's just himself! Yeah, but I don't think he ever, like... I don't think he ate people normally. I no, think he didn't. I think that's a new thing. The strongest pupil yeah, I'm, is I, I, Like, I'm expressing the fact that he never changes shape. Yeah. He doesn't have to. He has re reached his uh, true and finalist form. Ah, oh, man. Okay. Hand in 100% of discoveries. We did that. Open at least 90% of treasure chests. We talked to the guy on Hamachow Island. We, we did that. We've done that. Fight at least 12 non-story ship battles. I think we've done that. Um, kill all four giant monsters. So that was the rock, the giant squid, the giant looper, and, and the giant the, spider. The giant spider. We've done all that. Mm -hmm. Hand in all bounties. That's all eight of them. Yes. We just did that. Finish the Angel of Death side quest, including we, all Moonfish. We've we done that. that. Kill at least 2,500 enemies, which we can check at Hamachow Island. And have at least 226 swashbuckler rating. 226? Yeah, now I click on buys, yeah. Um, buys the Bounty King. So, I believe that if you don't have at least 226, it can't give you any of the special titles like that. Like, those don't unlock until you have a higher, high enough swashbuckler rating. Right. I think. Well, let's go check in so, with, ha let's go check in with the Hamachow King. Yeah, so that shouldn't be the problem. If that were the problem, we would have to just keep grinding battles until our swashbuckler rating slowly improved. Mm -hmm. All, All right. right. Uh... Alright, you big curmudgeon. Alright, so what do we check first? First check the way I fight. The way I fight. First, first off, off, the number of times you've chirp engaged in battle, 719 times. <laughs> you fight too much. You either don't know what you're doing or you're just plain belligerent. On top of that, you defeated 2,656 enemies. Okay, so that's above our minimum. Alright. And the number of times you've run away is... You've never run away from a battle. Yeah, because that can lower your swashbuckle. Lastly, rating. the number of times any of you have been knocked unconscious during a battle, I don't think this matters. No. Okay, so next check, treasures. Nope. Mm. Alrighty. 94%. 94%. Well, that's pretty average, and you have what it takes to be a decent air pirate, Chirp. There are some chests that can't be found once they passed up, yada yada. And you've caught a, quite a few fish now until now, Chirp. 229 fish. Total value of the gold, yada yada. You're about the level of an average fisherman. Not too bad, I guess, Chirp. But that's all I have to say about your treasure hunting. So, tech so yeah, we should have everything required. The only thing I could think to do is do more ship battles. Um, in which case, the best place to find those would be around Valua, like between Sailor's Island and Valua. Do you think that's all we still need? Um, do you, do, like, you grinded a few ship battles beforehand. Yeah, it's possible that we haven't hit 12 yet. I would have thought that we did, but maybe not. Alright, um, oh boy, this is gonna be fun. 
Uh, yeah, so head to, like, south of Valua. All right, so I gotta go northwest. Well, while we're traveling there, I'll take a, I'll keep an eye out for any other ship battles. Meanwhile, uh, what else has been going on? Um, so Fire Emblem Three Houses is out. Yep, and I've been playing it like crazy, and I'm not even halfway through the game. I have not started it yet. It's coming in the mail. Yeah, because you, you didn't pre-order it like a smuck. Yeah. Yeah, I feel a little bit dumb about that, but it, it did give me time to finish Zeno, Xenoblade Chronicles, mm -hmm. which I enjoyed very much. I did. I, I like Xenoblade Chronicles enough, but I'm not. Uh, I liked it okay. I'm not crazy about it. But I almost, I'm almost surprised how much I did like it though. I think I think the story sticks the landing at the end. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, no, Xenoblade Chronicles, in my opinion, has a very good story. Unfortunately, I can't really say about the same. Say the same about Xenoblade Two or X. Unfortunately, not that those games are bad necessarily, but they didn't engage me as much as Xenoblade Chronicles did. I'd be curious to try Xenoblade Two sometime. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to bother with X. Yeah, that like Xenoblade Chronicles X is definitely like the low point in my opinion. Xenoblade Chronicles Two is good enough. I'm glad I played it, but I'm not. I'm probably not going to go out of my way. I'm just going to go double check one last time. Yeah, it's supposed to. What are these? Uh, fishies. Yep, fish. Yeah, because it's supposed to. There's supposed to be a new discovery here. It doesn't count towards your hand in all discoveries, but a new one is supposed to show up there. Right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and head towards, uh, south of Valua, in case we- I hope the ship battles are all we need to do. I am- I am heartbroken right now. I was so excited for this, and I was worried something might go wrong, and it did. Well, let's, uh, let's not lose our heads. Okay, go over Sailor's Island, face northwest, this is what I've been doing. And, yeah, just kind of keep scanning the horizon. Uh, I think that's it. Yep. Yeah, it's amazing how... How... <sighs> God damn it. All right, there we go. You trailed off there with the most aggravated expression. I am... De I'm defeated. Well, we're not out of the woods yet. Yeah. I don't even specter spell ship. Use the word impudent. Like, <laughs> will you challenge dude, the value in armada? What value in armada? <laughs> oh yeah, I guess we get to show off like how good our ship is against a regular, but still like scaled to our level point in the game ship. I mean, it's kind of shaped like the dolphin is, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I get the feeling that they are eventually, like, the technology is catching up to the dolphin because Valua built the dolphin They yeah, knew they how did. to do it. Uh-huh. It's just they... Unfortunately, now, like, they really have no, uh, nothing to defend them anymore. Or, like, nothing to fight for anymore. Their, their home is gone. Yeah. Like, kind of gotta wonder who these guys are. That I, I guess, you know, they... I tend to think these ships you can still fight are Valuants who were like away from the country when it got blew up. They, they also just, might they just, also might still be people who are loyal to Galcian. You know that's possible actually. I didn't think about that. Um. Yeah, I think just like without a country or whatever, they're like, well, we need to get back at them, and they're you know they're angry and confused. And mm -hmm. Most people do think that air pirates are straight up bad people if Piastol wasn't enough of an indication but yeah really I like Xenoblade Chronicles there were things that like were kind of annoying about it like um well I was surprised how much I did actually get into doing side quests. Right. Um, it was kind of like if you guys remember when we were doing discoveries, because I start I, I start getting like an addiction. To, oh yeah. To oh yeah. Completing small tasks like that. Um, you're one of those. You're one of the guys who would take forever to beat Skyrim. Yeah. I. I guess some of the things like it didn't bother me how bare bones the quests usually were. 
like, there weren't cutscenes or anything, it was all just, like, dialogue, but you kind of need to do that when you're a game with so many little side quests. Right. Oh, hi, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, sometimes the... I don't know, I wasn't always driving with, like, how dialogue and cutscenes were, like... They really spell a lot of stuff out for you, and that's just my own personal Oh, preference. and Xenoblade? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, but... <laughs> the one thing that resonated with me a lot more than I thought it was... A lot more than I thought it would. I really like Ricky. <laughs> they hit upon? Yeah, and when I first were, like, seeing Nippon, I'm like, Oh, God, they're imitation Ewoks. They're, oh, they're... He's talking in third person. This is going to be so annoying. I already knew about him from Smash Brothers as an assist trophy. Right. No, dude. Favorite like, I, character. I loved Ricky when I played through Xenoblade Chronicles. He is an absolute joy to have in, on the team. And, like, oddly emotional. Like, a lot. Like, my favorite moments in it, like, not just for comedy, but for drama, usually came from Ricky. Who, Ricky doesn't have much drama, but, like, scenes of him talking to other characters are pure gold. Yeah. Um, there's just... I won't completely re, re retell it, but, uh, for those who have played the game, like, my favorite moment, like, as far as, like, a scene in the game... Yeah. ...is probably when you get to the fallen arm and people are, like, separated, and there's a scene between... Him and Dunban and Melia. I know exactly the scene you're talking about. And it's actually, like, Ricky being, like, like, the emotional backbone of the team. Oh, dude, like, like, I'm sorry, Ricky's totally the bard of the team. Yeah, plus, plus you also, like, it's easy to forget that he, like, he has 14 children, that he's, like, a family man. Uh, Alright, let's do one more ship. Alright. And if it's still not there, we'll call it an episode and I'll, I don't know, I'll work on it this week. <laughs> yeah, this is a thing, guys. This would be, it would be really great if the Hamachow man told you how many ship battles you've done. Right, though? This is... Like, that's a factor I didn't even take into account the first time. Didn't I talk about this last episode, that one thing this game really needs is, like, a clearer way to denote what you've done like like maybe in a remake you can go like meet up with the hamachow uh with the hamachow man and uh, he could give you like an item that allows you to track all your statistics and whatnot right yeah and like a chart with more complete information seriously though. i want a chart I'm not seeing it, man. No. Nope. <sighs> okay. Muda. <clears throat> One more. You are determined, aren't you? Yeah. I'm frustrated and I'm hungry, which is making me mad. Why didn't you eat something before we started this? <laughs> because I was busy grinding ship battles, Oscar. Cupel uh... gets to eat. So, yeah, but there's such a thing as eating while you're playing the game, especially in a ship battle where there's a lot of a lot of idle time. You're not doing anything. Yeah. Now, I had a late breakfast, and then I don't know. I had Chinese after I before I. I always get Chinese before I come here to make sure I'm nicely nourished. Yeah, Oscar usually shows up either with Chinese food or Wawa. Yeah, we've been over this before, but a lot of people. I mention Wawa a lot on the channel, and people are like, what the heck is Wawa? And I feel so bad for you. <laughs> it's a more regional thing. <laughs> but, oh, man. I guess in, like, other places, like, I know somebody who's from Georgia that says they don't really eat subs there, and that they're more about, like, wings. And I love wings, but, like, I can't just eat wings all the time. I can eat subs almost any time. That's true. Um... I mean, what's a universal one that's similar to Wawa? Like, I don't know, 7-Eleven, maybe? It's like Subway, but good. Wawa? Yeah. I don't even compare it to that. I love Subway. Okay. I mean, I don't like Subway, but... Mm. I wouldn't call Subway complete garbage, but, like... Uh, it's a little bit more... I don't know, fast foody. 
I don't need, I don't think I can agree with that, frankly. Hmm, okay. But that's just me. Would you take Subway over Wawa? Hmm. Oh, no. When it comes to sandwiches, yes. Oh, God. You get, like... I don't know, Wawa has the, like... You can put in... Also, Wawa has a lot more than sandwiches. Exactly. So I go to, I go to Wawa... I, I go to Wawa for, like, fast stuff that, ha that I can get a lot of variety from. I will say this much. I now understand why people like going to Sheets a little more. She but Sheets is good, too. Sheets is great, too. But it, de it also depends on what you get, in my opinion. Like, I think Wawa does some things good, and then, and like, uh, like some things better than Sheets, and Sheets does some things better than Wawa. There are some things Sheets have, yeah, that just and, aren't and even on the menu at Wawa. Exactly. And, th and that dictates the difference for a lot of people, is that, like, some people just like different things, and some, yeah. they, some guys get the regulars at Sheets that so, Wawa has, but not as good. It's not fast food. It is food that you get quickly. Yes. But it's not like McDonald's, like, yeah, big no. bag of grease kind of food. Exactly. Like, I try to avoid eating at fast foods like that all the time, or like, um, as much as I can. Yeah. There is one place, however, that I love going to, that anytime someone tells me, oh, hey, you want to go to this place? And, like, I know it's absolutely unbearably unhealthy for me, but I love going there because I think it's tasty. It's White Castle. I've never been to White Castle. You've never been to White Castle? I've heard horror stories about White Castle. Yeah. But I... But I don't necessarily know if I believe it. Um, I personally love White Castle, again, because it. I think it tastes great. I will admit, though, like, when it comes to the general fast food type of thing, it is probably one of the worst things for you health-wise. Like, it is, like, it's absolute garbage what you're putting into your body. But what do you get at White Castle? Huh? What do you get? There are sliders, mainly. Okay. Uh, sliders, they're also uh, famous for their onion rings. Um... But again, like, it's absolutely, it's like really, really, really bad stuff. It's greasy as hell, and like, it's just bad for you. But again, I, yeah. I kind of treat it the same way I treat candy. Candy, I know, is really, really bad for me, but I'll eat it. But you it. gotta treat yourself, yeah. Exactly, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. So it's like, I really like fast food, but I've been being good. I haven't had, like, real fast food in a while. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, saw the news on Twitter, but uh, Amber recently moved into... Uh, my house. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. So yeah, we are now living together, and I will say this much, she is probably going to help me a little bit with my eating habits, because here's the thing. Um, one of my favorite descriptions, like, you know how people comp you know how people describe their body to, like, measure how healthy they are? Okay. Here's, here's the thing with me. I have a body type that lets you know that I do work out, I do, like, you know, try to take care of myself, like, yeah, make you're, sure. you're for all the world to see a pretty healthy person. Exactly. Like, I, I, I tend to try to take care of myself as best I can. However, I also have the body type that lets you know that I'm not gonna say no if someone offers me a cookie. Yeah, okay. I eat anything. I wouldn't say that's your body type. You don't look... I well, don't know. well, again, like, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. Like, I'm, I'm lean, I'm pretty healthy, I got yeah. a good upper body, good legs. I have a bit of a belly, though. Do you? I don't think you do. No, man, that's a normal amount of belly. <laughs> Let the record show Oscar just showed me his belly. <laughs> it wasn't a lot. I mean... And I'm not even saying, like... <laughs> and I'm not even saying, like, it's a normal amount by American standards. I'm normal by American standards, which is sad. Uh-huh. American standards for weight is sad. Okay, I'll put it... Okay, I guess you could maybe say it this way. I'm... I'm, uh... A li I have a bit of a belly... When at, when at worst you are a normal weight worldwide prop yes and yes, that's a that, compliment that, that that is a good way to put it like i'll put it to you this way my body type is probably the average body type you'll see for most latinos okay yeah like because like you, you go to south america you go down and like like you don't look like you should be playing in the world cup but you're healthy exactly like i'm healthy enough like i keep myself like in shape um i don't get sick all that often i i, I think i look good but again, like, I offer me food, I will eat it. Yeah. I think you just have, like, a fast metabolism, though, too. Oh, no, I do. also, you're active and you burn off those calories. Yeah, exactly. I have an incredibly fast metabolism. Oh, screw you, Moon Hamachow. Or Golden Hamachow, or whatever it is that appears here. I think we're gonna have to do some grinding, dude. I already did grinding. Okay, so... You sure it's here? We're gonna call it here, completely defeated. Well, there's another... One, yes. Two, if we wanted to check another way, I guess we could, like... Do you want to test it out? 
Um, it's a thought. We could go back to Crescent Island, maybe. We can go to Kentucky Fried Hamachow. Excuse me? Because if this thing doesn't want to show up and let me complete our save file, then I'm going to eat it. Hey, I just realized something. Yeah? You know how the loopers have, like, really good dodge, right? Yeah. Final Cupel doesn't have an animation that really facilitates someone dodging his attack. Oh, yeah. Is he... Is Final Cupel 100% accurate 100% of the time? Yeah, is it like a swift kind of situation? Huh. Someone in the comments answer that for me because, like, I'm looking at his animation and I'm like... This doesn't facilitate a dodge mechanic. Or, like, a dodge animation. It's basically just him sucking Wait. up the enemy and... Okay, go back to that ridge. What? I, I, I don't know. I might I might be getting excited over nothing. But check more, like, on top of it, not in the actual, like, cratery part of it. Just fly around here. Oh! <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm not swearing. I mean it. Jesus, thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, the episode's not over yet. <laughs> well, gee, I think you need to check the accuracy of the information you've been given. It told me on top of the arch that you go through to get to Sailor's Island. That's where we were looking, and it's like cratery there, right? So I figured that's the perfect place to fit a Gulhamachow. A bird-like unknown creature shining gold. They say that it is a hybrid between Hamachow and an ancient animal, but details are still unknown. If you are lucky enough to see this rare bird, your wish will be fulfilled. It's a shooting star story. And it is. Huh. You ever see... I love that art, by the way. That's really nice. Have you seen Inside Out, the Pixar movie? Of course I have. You know how, like, towards the end in the big emotional moment or whatever, and it's basically that, like, okay, Riley's getting older and her emotions are going to be more, like, complicated now. Right. And it creates the memory that rather than being yellow for happy or blue for sad, it's both. It's, like, bits of both because it's a memory that has both happiness and sadness in it. Right. That's where I am right now, where it's complete happy fulfillment and burning rage. <laughs> I am so glad angry right now. Because <laughs> you're just kind of hitting yourself and it like and like the information that was given to you and it's like if only we looked a little higher. Okay. Hi. Save. I like his little dance. Save the game and go to Crescent Island. Okay. Jesus, man. There we go. I'm, Are I'm, you sure we should be saving the game right now? In the middle of recording? Uh, you can save it to a different file if you want. I keep forgetting we do- I keep forgetting we can do that. Um, okay. Saving that file yeah, to Mid Ocean. Those, those mere 64 hour save files. We're on to 70 hours, yo. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, hi, um, Ernie. Wait, it's not Ernie. What's that one character from Billy and Mandy that says that all the time? I know the character you're talking about, but I rarely watch that show. Yeah. Oh man, my friend, my friends on Skype have been joking about that character for so for so long lately that they just love quoting uh, quoting him by he saying he talks about you know, in like terrible 2000s slang, and his dad talks in terrible 90s slang. Yeah. And his grandma talks in like terrible 70s 80s slang. Yep. No, the dude says yo all the time, and it's. Like my my friends on Skype made a series made a like. Hey a Mandy, I know you're gonna love me it. someday, yo. And he's got his like big nerdy glasses and sweater vest. Exactly. Yeah, Billy and Mandy was a weird show. I, I love the I love the fact that like. It's kind of I was having this discussion with a few people earlier, right? Cartoons back in the day got away with a lot. Yeah. And I kind of miss that. I think they still do, but it's just different. Oh hey, it's the flail. That still looks weird as hell! Yeah. Okay, so I have a feeling that this discovery is going to be dab-smack on top of Crescent Isle. Um, no, we actually need to go in. 
Oh? And I think we should get a cutscene. Oh! Fight the special air pirate. Oh, hi! So that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. And, and I want to do it now because you're the one in control and I've been like, like you should have this. <sighs> Alright everyone, we're home. Get some rest while we have the chance. It really is nice to come home once in a while. Finally, I can have some time to unwind. Hey baby, how have you been, Red? You miss me? Are you kidding me? <gasps> oh, it sounds like there's someone out on the deck. Ika, is it a friend of yours? That crude voice, that musky smell, could it be? <laughs> I'm touched, baby. You remembered me. I'm back for you, and this time I'm not taking no as an answer. Oh, I hate him so Hi, much. Hi, Vigoro! Oh, yeah! He does this thing. Air Pirate Vigoro. Vice, show yourself! Air Pirate Vigoro is here to greet you. So this is him no longer with Valua. Taking I love how <laughs> Ike is the one just walking. And he's got his mortar club. I knew it. That would explain why I've been feeling nauseous all day. Figaro, you're alive? As much as ever. Since the last time we met, I've become an air pirate, as you can see. And I've searched the world for the strongest sailors I could find, and picked fights with all of them. Fight after fight, I emerged victorious, and I am stronger than ever. With this strength, you won't stand a chance against me. W wait a second there, Vigoro. Are you sure you want to fight? Again? Of course! And I even did everything the proper air pirate way. I boarded your ship, and now I'm challenging you to a fight. That is true. Come on, Vise. Once I defeat you, I will become the king of all air pirates. Speaking Vise, because Vise is... Yeah, Vise is the king. ...recognized worldwide <clears throat> now as King of Air Pirates. And as you guys can see, we have Vigoro here. Or, not Vigoro, um... Gilder. Gilder here. Yep, with his best equipment and all that. So, um, different battle music, by the way. Uh, this is the one he usually uses for value and bosses. That's right. So his color is red. Um... All right, Purple so... Purple is going to be the best against him. All right, let's test the waters and build up some, uh... Wait, some... can you do me a favor? Um, go up the dial to equipment. Because that doesn't... Oh, no, no, that's it. That's the right one. It just didn't look right to me for some reason. Move the C-stick. For some reason, I was afraid... Look at his other sword. Did we, like... No, that's no, the right no, one. That's the right one. For some reason, it looked to me like it was the default sword. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Uh, his regular blade looks fine. Yeah. Um, I, I like it, it's his cutlass blade that. Yeah, the like, Vorlick blade, blade that, is like, only looks one. A, it looks shorter. Yeah. yeah, the Vorlick blade is only one sword. Sorry. Mm -hmm. No, that's cool. It's cool. Um, all right. So let's test the waters a little bit. Um, this is supposed to be arguably the hardest boss in the game. Really. Um. Supposedly, Piastal's harder, though, from what I've been told. Yeah. That's purple, right? Uh, yes. So, this guy, Piastal, uh, Daikakuya, remember him. Yes, I do remember Daikakuya. And the final boss are all kind of, like, up there as hardest boss in the game. Hey, baby. Yeah, he still does that. Yep, he's back with the charms. He didn't do the charms at all during our lockdown. Ah, season. she got her. So what I'm interested in, though, is there is a move of Gilder's that we've hardly ever used, but I think Gilder has the power to protect the party from adverse effects. You're right! So I think that might be his job here today. All right, then. Uh, well, first we gotta snap uh, Ika out of that state. Yeah. So first of all, um, yeah, let's go for a Cutlass Fury to start. Okay. 
Um, you are going to use Curia. On Ica. Um, right, yeah, Curia. I was confusing Curia and Rezon for a second. And, if I recall, it's Aura of Denial. Yes. Your petty little tricks won't work on us. We kind of just chose Gilder randomly to be in this fight because, but like... But now, now, now that I think about it, this is perfect. It's kind of a good match, yeah. We've been doing that a lot lately because, like, you know... You remember the same thing kind of happened with Lord Zivil and Bane. Yeah, like Drachma... Drachma ended up being, of... like, the perfect character to bring into that fight. Yes. Well, I did do the poll um, discussed last episode. Mm hmm And I'll tell you guys now, it was a landslide victory for Enrique. Yeah, people wanted Enrique in that last fight. It was like... And you know what? I'm okay with that, quite frankly, because... Enrique's got a bone to pick with, uh, with, uh, bleh. W w uh, yeah. with, um... W with Galcian. Ga Galcian and, um, you know... Uh, I mean, Ramirez. Ramirez, Ga Galcian, thank you. Galcian's dead, but... Oh, jeez. Um... This is gonna hurt. Yeah, the weapon assault is kinda... Oh, god. Yeah, uh, Vigoro's really strong. It's interesting that because everybody else is that full, the music didn't change to, like, oh no music there. Mm -hmm. Uh, should you do that while Vi's is down? You are correct. Thank you for reminding me. Um. Alright. Let's go with a focus with her. You're gonna get him back up with Rosellum. And Gilder, actually no, Ika, you need to do, you, you need to be on heal duty. Uh, cause, uh, okay. Yeah, okay, Fina doesn't need any, so I'm gonna use a Sac, a, uh, Sacrez or Sacrulin. Let's go with, uh, Sacrulin on... Gilder? Gilder. You are going to get Vi's back up, and Gilder, I'm gonna keep going with R of Denial right now. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Gilder has the attack power to do much to... Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he might be able to do something with Claudia, but that but we need those yeah. other points to, like, do the other things. The thing is, the Claudia is really good for a group of enemies. Yeah. So, not so much against a single guy like Vigoro. And, um, Drachma's Hand of Fate would not work. Yeah, no, not at all. Okay, so this should just not work, right? Yeah. Ha ha! Still there do, it is. Still does damage. It still does damage, a significant amount of damage. But yeah, thanks to Gilder's aura of denial, he can no longer charm us, which is nice. Cool. Like it does mean that Gilder is uh, pretty much going to be delegated to that job. Well, it's kind of like how Enrique is delegated to Justice Shield all the time. Exactly. But I think this works out because we need Ika support. Yeah, and I don't think we need Delta Shield for anything. We so. don't need Delta Shield. No. Um. Okay. So. Um, because Vigoro's ability is a cla is a yeah. character-specific ability. Um... I would say Vi's focus and put an Increm on everybody. I agree. Because Increm is also going to increase our defenses. Yeah. Alright, we have, like, just enough points. Honestly, like, I'm starting to think that maybe we should do Aura of Denial. Uh... Or no, not do Aura Denial the turn after he uses Vigoro's Charm. Because he more often than not is going to use it twice. Yeah, I don't think he's going to double up there. Because I would, I do want... I would like to have Gilder do other things besides just the Aura. Yeah. Oh, there was another one! Oh yeah, his basic attacks cause effects too. So no, maybe we do need to stay on Aura of Denial. Okay, I did not know that. That, that might stun or um, silence... So yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to stick with uh, uh, with aura of denial. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do a I'm going to do a major focus first. Well, wait, question before you do that. Yeah. Um, do you maybe want to use one of the items that like fills up our SP gauge? Because if, well, if not here, then in that when? case, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, kind of use pirate's wrath right now. Okay. And then we'll use it next turn. Okay. So I'm going to take this turn to just go ham on this guy. Okay. Hmm. We don't have enough for vi for uh, Aura of Denial. Okay. We can do one without. Nice! 
Now How has... much health does this guy have? He has so much health. We're gonna find out right now. I'm worried he's gonna do that big cannon blast attack again and... Mm -hmm. Luckily that cannon blast only targets one person. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't think... I might regret saying this later, but I don't think Vigoro has any kind of, like, good party wipe moves. Dude, his health is insane! That was a straight-up pirate's wrath! That was weird to look at. <laughs> Keeple 8 Vigoro. Cannon fire. Alright, who are you going after, Gilder? I'm gonna charm you, then I'm gonna blast you. He's, he's aiming for Gilder. Yeah, he wasn't going to survive that. Probably the smartest move he could have done. Alright. I believe what we're looking for is... Cliff of Might? No. Oh, yeah, that's it. Aura Valor. Is it the Aura Valor? Yeah. Okay, increases power, Glyph of Speed. Yeah, I think it's a Glyph of, or a glyph of Valor. Alright. You are going to Rizellum Gilder, and we're good. And then we can either do a Blue Rogue's Attack, or a, um... I forget what it's called, a, like, Golden Judge Judgment move. Let's see. Let's see how things fare this turn. Because, for all we know, Vigoro could still do something. Could do something drastic. Okay. He just attacked. Good. Mm, okay. So his basic attack yeah. deals confusion. Never mind. Oh, but, it but, cured. But it wore off. Yeah. Oh, okay. That works for me. All right. So, um, if you go ahead and use the crew special, it'll. Like, it's basically a freebie. We'll get a regular yeah, turn Yeah, Prophecy afterwards. or Blue Rogues? I think we should do Blue Rogues, because not only is that going to heal us back up and give us some boosts, it uh, it's still going to do a significant amount of damage. All right, go for it. Let's go. And now we're using Blue Rogues with our, like, star team. Yeah. Got Kalzim. Tika Tika. <laughs> oh, this is gonna help too. That's disgusting. That's my least favorite out of all of them, but Marco is so good in ship battles. How? Hey, we have a more offensive team set this time. Last time we did this, we had mostly the support ones. Mm -hmm. and that's a support one, I think. Yep. Yeah, the red backgrounds are supports, and the blue are offensive. Okay, we are seeing his health start to go down. There we go, look at that. We're all healed up. Excellent. Alright, so yeah, that was just a freebie. Yeah. We're, like we're back on the we're back on the board here. Alright. Do a mat. It's do a mass focus or of denial. Okay. I I am glad we found a use for that move. <laughs> yeah. Against Vigoro of all characters. And it was basically like the last move we had to showcase. At least fully. Yeah. You know what we never used too much? A uh, epsilon mirror. Mm-hmm. Which I think would be useful here if we knew if Vigoro was going to strike her. Yeah. Well, and also I think it only works on spells. Oh, does it? I think it's only on spells and only ones targeted at Ica. Well, that's the thing. Like, from what I am to understand, Epsilon Mirror... Let me let me look at it. No, I'll, I'll look it up. Epsilon Mirror creates a mirror-like aura that envelops Ica for one turn and restores 10 MP. 
Um, I think it's a... I think it's a, uh... I, I think it's a spell that c completely makes her invincible for one single turn. Okay. I think. Because I remember that being the case, uh, the last time we used it. Okay, I'm gonna have, uh... I'm gonna have, uh... You do the Rizellum. Let me look at you for a moment. Uh, Lunar Blessing is useless here. I'm realizing it probably wasn't the smarter thing to, like, go right into this episode, because... Yeah, we're gonna be here for a little while. Yeah, whoops. It's cool. It's cool. We, we had a lot of downtime, though, because we were grinding ship battles unknowingly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, grinding, look at that. Grinding ship battles we didn't need to. <laughs> I love how we just, like, swing in that gilder. Yeah, the good thing about this fight is that I think he can only really take out one person at a time with that cannon fire. Yeah, so So as long as we have spirit points, we can use Rosellum. You know what? I should have had us get Vise's sword first. Um, oh, you mean like... The, the last thing that we get for the three legends is a better sword for Vise. That's fine. You know, you have me incredibly curious right now, but... I'm... Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, Vigoro is a physical guy, isn't he? Yes. I'm wondering now. Oh, do you want to try and drill him? No. Drilling him? I want to try magic. Like, just straight up powerful magic. Okay. What's a good single target ability? Um... I think all the best spells also hit multiple targets. Alright, let's try a Pyruin first. No, he is a red unit. Yeah, try Crystallin. One enemy for enormous damage. Okay, okay, yeah, let's give this a shot. You, I need to heal. And Gilder, let's continue with Orb of Denial. Oh, no, Epsilon Mirror makes her completely invulnerable for a turn. I thought so. Yeah. But specifically on Ica. Mm hmm Let's see how much Crystallin does. Mm, not a lot. Yeah, disappointing. It's better than her basic attack, though. Actually, it does more than Vise's basic attack. Holy crap. Big old damage. Random damage. fire. Ah. Okay, that was a little different. I was afraid at first that it was going to hit multiple targets, though. Uh-huh. Because if that were the case, we'd be in a bit of trouble. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, trying to delegate. Um, Ika also has... Res abilities. Yes. Rizellum is 8, though, so I'm not going to use uh, Cutlass Fury. Your petty little tricks won't work on. Apparently, a popular. Um, strategy for this one. It's a little bit unreliable, but a lot of people use the uh, Swirl Meringue weapon for Ica because it is possible to confuse Vigoro. Oh, you know what? That makes sense. Okay. It's an AoE. Okay, that changes things. Aw, oh, man. Ah, crap baskets. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna try something. No. Yeah, actually.
I'm just gonna say this much right now. Thankfully, these characters know how to position themselves, and Fina is smart enough to stay away <laughs> yeah. from the party so that she can get so that she can be away from those AoE attacks. And there we go. We're back in business. Cool. <laughs> you actually use the Epsilon mirror. It's a dodecahedron. The cool thing about Epsilon Mirror that at least makes it a little bit useful is the fact that it does recover 10 of her MP. And we're using her for spells all over the place. Alright, let's do another mass focus here. Yeah, this is gonna take a little while because this guy is yeah. beefy. I'm honestly thinking, in the interest of time, maybe we should cut it. Like, split it into two episodes like we did with that one? Like, actually come back to this later. <laughs> hey, I, need, I need to go pick up my wife. You do. What time is it? It is 3 o'clock. What time does your wife uh, get out of work? 3 o'clock. Oh, dear. I mean, we started the battle half an hour ago. I was a little overzealous. I was just so excited by this golden homage out. Um, it's up to you, man. Yeah, I think maybe we'll have to come back next episode <laughs> to finish this guy off. Well, we got a taste of what we need to do, so yeah. I guess we can always pick it up later. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I was very excited. Nah, that's cool. I mean, I had fun. I had fun, too. I, I always have fun during this Let's Play. I try not to waste people's time, but I'm happy with how it all has been shaking out. So... Oh, we're halfway, too. It's up to you, man. Um, see, I sent her a text, too, to see if maybe, like... I don't know. She... No. No, we'll, we'll regroup for next week. Alright, then. I'm the Green Scorpion. I'm the Comic Foil. Thanks for bearing with us. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with you. You're the one who said that it wasn't on top of the thing. I I don't blame you, you though, because it, where I thought it is unclear. It is misinformation. It is misinformation. I, I feel like I was led to believe it was a certain place. You know, it probably would have been more useful if we looked up a video. Yeah, it's just I didn't think I needed one. <laughs> Gilder just like straight up kneecapped the guy. You ever notice when he attacks somebody in melee range, he like kneecaps them? Yeah. Alright, we'll see you guys next time. See you later.